This is the week of October 28th through November 1st. We're covering student activist activities 2.1 and 2.2 today. Our objectives for this week are I can define and explain community activism, oppressed, oppressors, and ally so that I can understand the vocabulary relevant to this unit. I know I'm successful when I can define these terms and explain their role in student activism. So the first thing we did this week was we went over community and you guys made some awesome community collages using Adobe Sparks. We have, we're still waiting for one more classmate who wasn't here, so it's not their fault to turn theirs in. And I will print these and all of these will be on display in front of the classroom. But I want you guys to take a look at what you all did and tell me if you notice, tell me if your definition of community changes or what do you see that are some of the themes throughout these. So this is everybody's together. Close the blind a little bit. So the activity prompt was everybody was to work in Google Sparks and you were going, let me see if I can scoot over so you can see it, yeah, there we go. So you were going to create a community collage. It had to have four pictures of community that you identified with, your community name, and icon. Does so anybody notice any patterns on what people chose? Flag. Flag. Flag is super representative of communities, right? What do we use flags for? Nations, clubs. Um, what is the rainbow flag a symbol of? Hmm? Right, LGBTQ pride so can be for communities, nations. So flag is an easy way to show a community marker. Any other themes we notice? Places. A lot of people identify with where they're from or where they've lived the most. How many of you are all have lived your whole lives in the Bay? So that's a big identifier for you, right? Like for mine, I put that I put New Mexico. I only lived there for five years. I was born there. I left when I was five. But it's a sense that I identify with. So places are definitely a part of a community. For our purpose, for this unit, we will define community as community will be a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. And the reason I chose this definition is if you live in San Francisco, can you feel like it's not your community? Yeah. So I like this definition of community because I believe community is a feeling, a sense of belonging. Can you go to a school and feel like you're not part of that community? Yes. So I think the most important part of community is a sense of feeling and a sense of belonging. So it was a wonderful exercise. You all did really great. Like I said, I'm going to print those and they're going to be out front on the door. So if you want to change them before I print them, let me know. Moving on. So for our second activity, 2.2, student activism, we watched the movie uh, Viva la Casa but with Cesar Chavez. And that movie, it wasn't a student activism, but the reason I showed it to you was it divided up um, categories and terms that you want to know for this unit really well. So for part A, we had, did anybody, so these were the questions you could answer. What responsibilities do individuals have to society? What responsibilities does society have to individuals? Whose responsibility is it to fight for those being exploited by someone or something more powerful? What factors motivate you to fight for a cause? What causes some social movements to succeed versus fail? And how can we affect social change in a nonviolent way? What does it mean to be empowered? All right, do you guys all have these up in front of you? And what you chose? Okay. Uh, Ian, what was your choice? Um, or who has theirs up? Do you have yours up, Mia? Grace? Ariana, do you have yours up? I, I, yeah, it's up, but I don't know what my writing was. Like, I wrote the answer to it. Okay, do you remember which one you chose? Yeah, I did, um, like, how can we affect social change? And what was your idea on how you, can we affect social change? Um, 
from my rope, but um, basically I said like through kids and like through uh, protests, but like um, getting through them, like through the people and to avoid nonviolent like in a nonviolent way we could just like basically talk to them instead of like and then avoid the people who don't agree with it okay. perfect so she brought up one form of activism activism are we talking about part a right now yes oh, Did anybody choose the res uh, responsibility prompt? What responsibilities do individual has or what responsibilities do community have? Yeah. Which one did you choose? Uh, uh, what responsibilities do individuals have in society? Um, and what did you put? Uh, you just want me to read the whole thing? Or you can summarize it. Um, I don't remember. What I wrote. I'll just read the whole thing, I guess. Uh, individuals have responsibilities to fight for injustices in so uh, society. Uh, people who don't do anything about injustices have no right to complain because they didn't do anything about it, or maybe they don't have time, I guess. Um, in order to have change, you need to do something about it. People make up society, and that's why people are able to change society. Uh, uh, people also have a responsibility to do what is right for society. People are afraid of change, aren't helping society. They want to stay how life used to be. Awesome. So Ian made a bold statement. He said, if you're not going to do anything, you can't complain. All right, we'll do a thumbs up in agreement, thumbs to the middle, thumb down. All right, there's mostly agreement. So that's one of the themes you're going to be reading about in your book, Internment. So what we found and why this unit focuses on student-led social movements is because the alt reason you all are sitting in this room right now is because of kids. We talked about that. It's because kids fought for the right of school integration with some adult help, but most of the protests that have gone on have been a lot of kid-focused things. And so we'll go into the internment goes, so people can say parents don't care, right? Parents don't care, they're old, they're jaded, but there's a lot more to that. There's a lot more responsibility, there's a lot more thinking behind it, and in the book, it's gonna parallel what the main character thinks and why she acts and why her parents don't act, and that causes friction between them. So you'll enjoy that in the book. All right, choose your person. So we'll go on to oppressors, targets of oppression. Who was, do you remember who the oppressors were in the movie, Sonny? Wait, what do you mean oppressors? In the Cesar Chavez movie. What do I mean oppressors? So oppressors are people who oppress people. So if you guys were trying to wear what you wanted to school, school said, no, you couldn't wear what you wanted to wear to school, who would be the oppressor? The school. And then who would be the target of oppression? Students, okay, and I'm trying to be mindful of using the word target of oppression because we also don't want to call people oppressed, right? Nobody wants to be an oppressed people. And maybe even if you are a victim of oppression, you don't feel like an oppressed person. So I'm gonna to try to use the term target of oppression instead of oppressed people. So in that movie, who were the farm workers fighting against? Or who was, who was not giving them rights? I'm pretty sure it was the farm owner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was the farm owners? Does anybody remember who was president? So he was president of the UFW. Yes, correct. But who was president of the U.S.? And they came out and they made an awesome statement. I think it was something like, "We think the protesters are anti-human." I don't remember the words he used. It was Reagan. So we could even oh, say, "Do you remember that?" Yeah, I didn't know he was president at that. Time. Yeah, so, well, I think that was later on in the movie, not when the movie starts, because Re Reagan was president in the 80s, so I think that was, like, after Bobby Kennedy had got shot and all that. Okay, so the oppressors for that. The oppressors were the farm owners. Sometimes you have to give it a little push. What about the police? Were the police helping? 
Yeah. Police was another form of the oppressors. What about the federal government? So these people, when you guys go for a work permit, who gives you your work permit? The school. The school. Who does the school have to go through? The school has to go through the state, right? So the school is a state-run agency. So whose responsibility was it to make sure these people had bathrooms, water, things like that? Can even go to the state, right? Or government. We'll just put as a whole kind of term. However, going with that same point, what were some of their allies? What does any can somebody define what does an ally mean, Ariana? Like a friend or an associate. Anybody want to add? Support. Support. So an ally is somebody who supports your cause. So even when we think about government, who was one of the government officials who supported their cause? Anybody remember his name? Bobby Kennedy. Bobby Kennedy. So the government also supported them in some ways. They did have some allies. Who else was there? Who else was some allies? Helped them out. They weren't. So an ally would be pretty much anybody who's not a farm order, worker but is supporting the cause. Boycotters? Boycotters? Yep. People who were boycotting. How were they boycotting, Mia? Uh, they They didn't buy grapes. They wouldn't shop at stores that sold grapes. What else did they do? They also like put signs, like they went to the stores and they like stood there and told people not to buy So that's a whole bunch of activism. So they did activism with how they spent their money and then spreading the word. Do you remember who gave the UFW, I think it was like $5,000 to support the workers on strike at the beginning? It was another union. So another union, why would it be important for unions to support each other? Or does anybody know what a union is? Okay, that's a good place to start. Yep. I, I'm not sure about this, but I think a union is like, the group of workers to have a lot of money and then they Okay, so the answer was a group of workers that have a lot of laws to protect them so they can't get fired. Is everybody allowed to unionize? No. So I didn't write it up here, I didn't think it, but off the back of my head, union is a group of people. So as a teacher, I have a teacher's union. So if I feel like I'm getting mistreated, I feel like if it's a hostile work environment, I'm protected by a bunch of rights. Um, we meet every week and we talk about our rights. We talk about how we can protect them. Um, if we wanted more money, we would all go on strike together. If we wanted better health care, it provides you with a group of people. How, and everybody who joins SFUSD, you can decline to be a union member, but everybody automatically pays dues. Uh, who comes from a charter school or has been to a charter school? So charter school teachers, for the most part, cannot unionize. So if the charter school teachers want more money, they can't organize. So unions gives you the right to organize in big groups. So we have a teacher on staff who got fired from her job for trying to unionize. This happens all the time because are you more, if you're one person and you're like, I don't feel like I'm treated well at this establishment, whether you're a teacher, you're a barista, you're working at Target, is anybody gonna listen to you? What if everybody was like, hey, we're getting shafted in pay and we want more money. Are they more likely to listen to you? Yeah. So as a manager's perspective, do you want people to unionize or not unionize? No. Don't. It depends, right? It depends. Are you somebody who's like, you know what? I need to be accountable to my employees so they're happy. One of the most successful companies that we have in America is Costco. It's crazy, right? Does anybody know why Costco is so successful? Costco hires from within. They promote their employees. So like the person who is head of sales started off getting, or I think she's head of liquor sales, uh, goods and stores. She's got a high up corporate job. She started gathering baskets. They hire from within. They're union run. They make sure um, their employees are taken care of. So from a managerial point, you could think unions are a really good thing. Uh, if you were Uber, do you think unions are good? No, Uber, nobody work, you guys, nobody, nobody works for Uber, right? Everybody has contracts, which means they don't get health insurance, they don't get paid time off. So does Uber want people to unionize? No. So that's what a union is. Does that make sense? It's a group of... Why couldn't charter schools unionize? They could. 
Well, so it depends on that charter school. It depends on the charter school. It depends on the city. So you saw they fought for the right to unionize, too, because they were denied the right to unionize. So everybody who was going on the picket line could be arrested. Nobody was feeding them. So when I was growing up, my dad worked in the copper mines in New Mexico. Copper mines are super dangerous. They fall all the time. There's chemical spills. You get chemical poisoning. And I remember when he would picket, our food was down. You're not making any money. And so then you would all form a line in front to keep, what are they called? It's a terrible term for them. People who cross picket lines. I'll put that up here too. It's another vocab word. Scabs. So when Oakland went on school, when Oakland went on strike last year, we tried to block the picket lines. Why would we try to do that? Because we didn't want other people coming in to do our job for less money because the whole point of organizing something like that is so nobody's benefiting from it. So I remember when we'd go on strike, there wasn't a lot of food. So going on strike is no joke. A lot of these things are workers who are, they're working in hospitality industries, they're cleaners, they're undocumented people, they're people who don't necessarily have a voice for themselves. These are people who are living paycheck to paycheck. CEOs aren't unionizing, they're not going on strike. People who clean bathrooms, nurses, police force, people who we need every day, they're the people going on strike. So, targets of oppression. Back to UFW Cesar Chavez. Who was the oppression against? Farm workers. How old were these farm workers? Old. They were old. Were there any kids in the field? Remember there was one quote about the, I think it was like picking an orange and the orange was bigger than the child's hand. So there was children, there was older people. Ah, uh, what race were they? Was everybody the same race? They were Hispanic. She said, I heard, you said Filipino. They were Filipino, Chinese, what else? Four whites. Four whites. Latinos. And what's crazy, what they don't talk about in there is in the 1920s, the U.S. government actually opened, I think it was the 1920s, the Bracetto Act, which actually asked people to come over from Mexico to do the fields, and we gave them legal documents to come over. Mm -hmm. Because so it followed the Exclusion Act. Right. Does anybody know what the Exclusion Act is? It's the first quiz in your new book. The Exclusion Act was the first act to ban a group of people based on ethnicity from coming to America. I'm giving you all the answers to that quiz right now, by the way. So before that act, the only way you were American, the only deciding factor was if you were born here. If you were born here, everybody was American. And then the first people that we decided to target, well, aside from Native Americans and other people, but the first legal group of people we decided to target was the Chinese. So yeah, that was the answer to your first quiz too. Solid. All right. So do we have a good understanding of the oppressed, oppressors, and allies? For your final project, it is required that you identify each one of these. So if you were doing the kid in Hong Kong who's organizing all these things, I would need to know who the target of the oppression is that he's fighting, who are the oppressors, who are the allies, and what's the form of activism that they're doing. Cool. Questions about this unit? Questions about the book? Awesome. And